Psalms, not chapters, but the divisions of Psalms. The 34 mm -hmm. divisions of Psalms. If I had less the title this morning, it would be the power of praise and worship. The power of praise and worship. And the scripture reads, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What is this scripture? What is this scripture really saying? I will bless the Lord. I, I, personal, it's personal. So it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. So it doesn't really, really make a difference where I am. I don't have to be at the church to bless the Lord. I don't have to, I don't have to, I can be riding down the road. I can be at the supermarket. I can be uh, in the mall. I can be just walking and blessing the Lord. I can bless him at all times because the word of the Lord tells me that I shall bless the Lord at all times. And what his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Because as I bless him on a continuous basis, then his praise is automatic out of my mouth. Amen. So it's a continuality that goes on in that process because I've been blessing him all day. I blessed him uh, uh, when, when the enemy tried to come against my back. I just blessed the Lord. Right. I just prayed just like I pray for anybody else. Right. I opened up my mouth, rebuked that in the name of Jesus. I commanded by the authority of Jesus Christ to come and move. And it did move. It moved before I even got back from the doctor's office. But oh God, I thank God. Because the blessed, it was blessed. Even though it was hurting, I was still saying thank you, Jesus. Amen. Even though it was painful, I was still saying thank you, Jesus. Yes. And you know what? Because I told my husband, I said, he said, you're going to be all right to speak. Or, or, oh, oh, I'm going to be at church. Because the Lord is going to bless me. He's going to heal me. Yes. He's going to take everything and put it back into the place Amen. where it needs to be. Yes. Yes. And sure enough, he did. So he says, I will praise him. So my praise is continually. Nobody has to pump and prime me. Nobody has to tell me to praise the Lord. Nobody has to tell me to bless him. Because I can look at my home and I can say I'm blessed. I can look at my car and I know I'm blessed. And I just can look at whatever God is doing in my life and I can just say I'm blessed. Yeah. And I can bless him anywhere I am. So I will bless the Lord Amen. at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Amen. My life makes this boast to the Lord. What is, what, what is my life making this boast in? My life is making the boast in what the Lord has done in my life. I don't give any credit to myself for what I have. I don't give any credit to myself for who I am. I don't give any credit for myself for what I have acquired in the natural. I don't give myself that credit. My life makes this boast in the Lord. So anytime someone says God has really the, uh, or, or no, they say, oh, that's really a nice car. No, I said, no, this is God's car. Amen. 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 This is God's house. Mm -hmm. This is God's money. That everything I have, I know it's because of the Lord. So I can boast in Him because He has given me what I have desired. So He says, let the humble and the afflicted bear hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. So this is something, this, this is a command that He tells us. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify, magnify me to enlarge. Whatever your problem or your situation is, and you can't seem to get about around it, you can't seem to get over it, you can't seem to get under it, all you have to do is open up in a praise and begin to magnify the Lord. Begin to magnify Him that all, everything that's not like God, all the distractions, all the frustration, all the anger, magnifying God will put that fire out. Mm -hmm. And so as I magnify Him, as I make Him big, I make Him bigger than the enemy. I make him bigger than the problem. Yes. As I magnify him, I enlarge everything around that, what I feel that's overtaking me. I begin to magnify the Lord so that God can get the glory. And he says, let us exalt his name together. And that's what we did on today through praise and worship. We exalted the Lord together. When we come in, in unity and exalt the Lord together, we build a throne in the midst of this house. And Jesus comes down and sits in the midst of us. And I'm going to tell you, everything that's not like God, got to go. Yes. Amen. Amen. When we exalt his name together, when we come with one heart and one mind, not with one mind here, yes. one mind over there, one yes. mind at home, one mind at, yes. work at the kitchen, one mind wandering here and there, but we came together yes. and exalted his name yes. together. Yes. Yes. And as we begin to exalt his name together, yes. things begin to come to fruition. Things begin to drop off. Amen. I don't know about you, they did to me. Yeah. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. Yeah. But I do know that's what happened. It all depends on how you yield. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. If you didn't yield, it might be still there. I'm going to tell you, it's still there. If you didn't yield to the power of God that was yeah. in the house, yeah. uh, doing the praise and worship, then yeah. you did not yield yourself. Amen. So it says, oh, magnify the Lord. And it says, I sought, inquired of the Lord, and required him. That's the reason why it's necessary to come into the house of the Lord and be in praise and worship. You don't need to wait to have the praise and worship to come to church. Because what praise and worship does, praise and worship gets you into a seeking mode. Yes. Hey. Yes. It gets you into the place where you need to be as you sing Zion's song, yes. as you sing the songs that, that our mystery, our Shadonah, uh, has brought before us. As we sing them, we are inquiring of the Lord. And when we inquire of the Lord, we inquire of the Lord and require of Him the necessities of life. Mm -hmm. And on this authority of His word, he had, and He heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. So when I really, really let God come in as I'm praising Him, as I really begin to seek Him like I should, then I'm delivered from all the fears. And I'm talking about the fears that come over us when we're in the house of the Lord. Sometimes we might hear something, hear God say something, but we're afraid to say something. We might hear God say, you know, get up, raise your hands, run around the building, do all these things you might be hearing in your mind, but we are afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, if there's a continuous praise, it doesn't matter who looks at you. It doesn't matter who, what people think of you. Amen. So it goes on to the next scripture. It says that they looked to him and were radiant, their faces. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces should never blush for shame or be confused. That's what praise does. If I continually praise him, I don't ever have to be ashamed. I don't ever have to be confused. I don't ever have to wonder where I am, who I am, or, or what I'm going to do. Because in the praise, there's a clearness of consciousness. In the praise, there's a watching of my mind. In the praise, I can't think about nothing but God. And what God has done for me in the praise. So when you praise Him, you can't be angry and praise Him at the same time. Amen. And if an angry person comes to you, all you got to do is lift up your voice and say, I pray, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I guarantee you that spirit will leave. Amen. I guarantee you that conscience of that individual will leave. So I don't have, you don't have to be ashamed or you don't have to be confused because praise clears and activates your mind to speak, yeah. think, think on the things that please the Lord. Amen. Mm. Amen. And this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who revere and worship him with all. And each of them he delivers. So I don't have to worry about the enemy coming unknowingly into my life, into my home, into my money, into my into whatever I'm doing. I don't have to worry about that because when I worship him, then he delivers me. When I worship him, he, he brings, makes sure that he encamps around me. Yeah. He encamps around you when you praise him. He encamps around you when you worship him. And this is one thing that has become taboo in the Bible, in the, in the house of God, that nobody want to really praise the Lord anymore. Don't nobody want to worship the Lord. And I believe it's because of a lack of, uh, a lack of knowledge, because we become very ignorant when we don't have any knowledge about what we're doing. But this praise and worship, this is what we are doing, this is what we will do, because this is what's going to carry us where we need to be. There will be no more confused people in the house if we just praise and worship the Lord. There will be no more fearful people in the house if we just praise and worship the Lord. And so, as He delivers us through the praise, yeah, there's power in the praise. There is deliverance in your praise and your worship. Praise attracts the presence. If you really want God to get into your space, just begin to praise Him. If you really want God to come to your rescue, just begin to praise Him. He's not going to come with your crying. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's not going to come with your begging. Right. But he's, He'll come if you praise Him. Yes. If you praise Him and then begin to quote the scriptures about your situation, but praising Him and giving Him thanksgiving at the same time, then He will come down in the midst of you. But it's not going to come because you don't understand that language. That is not the language of God to beg. That is not the language of God to cry. And I mean, you might get emotional sometimes, but I'm talking about crying because you're in trouble. Amen. You don't come for them tears. Amen. Ah, somebody, can I say how somebody, amen. well, that's all right. You got to say amen. amen. That's all right. You ain't got to say amen. That's how I know it must be really, really marinating right there. <laughs> so if praise attracts the presence, we do not praise God to glorify Him, but to get His presence in our midst. That's why we praise the Lord. I want His presence in my midst. 
I want his presence in this house. Amen. And that's the reason why I'm so a stickler up on praise and worship. Because praise and, praise and worship is, is conducive and, and to bring the praises of God, the word, the house of the Lord, of God in the house, it's really up to you to do that. Amen. And when you do that one audience, of, a one-on-one -on -one audience with the Lord, then you don't have to worry about anybody else getting with you because that's what happens. What you are doing, you are attracting the presence of the Lord. So you will sing unto the glory of God. You will say unto the glory of God. You will decree unto the glory of God. Even in songs, you will declare, declare of the glory of God even in songs. You will talk about his goodness, how good he is, and how worthy he is. And the more we do that, the more he becomes, it comes down into our presence. But we got to get his presence in our midst. We got to get him here. And we don't get in here because the song is fast and the song, and, and, and the song is slow. We get in here because we are ready for him. We are yield and we are open for him to come in. And the more yield we become, the more open we become, the more he comes down on the inside of us. Yeah. Yeah. And he, what, dwells there. Give me Psalm 22 and 3. So when we praise God with our lips and our hearts, he shows his approval and acceptance by manifesting his presence in our midst. This is when true worship takes place. When he manifests his presence into our midst. Here's a, a foundational scripture for that. It says, but you are holy. O you who dwell in the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. Give me King, King James Version. Because I have to make, make sure this is plain. I like that, but I don't really, really like it. It's not coming to where I'm trying to go. But thou art holy, O God, thy, there he is, <laughs> thy inhabits the praises of Israel. Thy inhabits the praises of Agape. Amen. Thy inhabits the praises of Agape. Yes. So when I, and see, there's one thing I do know about praise. The Bible says in Psalms 150, it says, let everything that has right. breath praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. I don't care if you are a sinner and you're breathing, yes. you ought to praise the Lord. Amen. You ought to praise it because you got your right mind. You ought to praise it because you got the activities of the limbs. I got to keep saying that you ought to praise it because you are alive and well. Yes. Praise but let everything that has breath praise the Lord. But he says, and this is the point I want you to see, but thou art holy. Mm. And this is what, what, what you have to understand, that, that, that God comes in quickly to a people who are holy, a people who are setting the standard for him to come into. O thou that inhabits our praises. So the more we are into him, and the more we yield to him, and the more our hearts and our minds are with him, the more he will come down in the midst of us. So if he's going to come down in the midst of us, that means that when he comes down in the midst of us, he's not just coming down to make you feel good. Amen. Oh, yes. oh, glory. Yes. Ah, yes. But he's coming down in the midst of you to break yokes. Yes. Yes. He's coming down in the midst of you to bring down strongholds. He's coming down in the yes. midst of you to, so for you to know that God is real yes. and that he is in the midst of you. He yes. wants to make himself known. Yes. And the only way he makes his stuff known is by the praises of his people yes. when we come together and exalt him. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. That's how it happens. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wants to do something in our midst. Yes. He wants to work a miracle. Yes. Mm -hmm. He wants signs, wonders, and miracles and everything that, that, that he can show that he is alive. He wants it to come down in the midst of us. He doesn't, you know, and this is the thing, you just don't want him to come down and then let him go back up. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. See, once he's come down in the midst, you got to yield your mind. You got to yield yourself. You got to yield so that the, that the enemy will not come and take away what God is doing. Everybody's being blessed and you're looking around wondering why you're not feeling anything. It might be because you ain't yield yet. Amen. You got to yield. Yes. Yes. You know when you're driving and you see that triangle? Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all just keep going, that's possible why you don't know how to yield. <laughs> that's accelerated. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to yield. And, and, and when you yield, you come to a slow stop. And if there's no traffic come, then you're going out. But if you go to come to a yield sign and you go through it like this, you just what? Ignored it. Ignored it. <laughs> so it's the same way with God. We got to learn how to yield. Yeah. And what I mean by that, and let me put it down to the language terms for you. You've got to learn how to get that stuff that you're so worried about out your mind. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, because you worry too much, and you come in here worrying, you come in here uh, 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 wondering what's going to happen, you come in here frustrated, if you come in here angry, then you have to move that out of the way. 
You got to move it out of the way. That's the reason why it says you need to come through the doors with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in your heart. Thanksgiving in your heart. And what? A praise on your lips or in your mouth. That's the way the people of God are supposed to come into the house of the Lord. It was never for you to come in here and say that this is the hospital. I'm sick. Let me let God heal me. No. You already know God. A physician is for those who don't, who are not healed. Who, who are sick. You ain't sick. You come in another way as others will come in another way who don't know him. Amen. Right, right, Amen. Amen. So God responds eagerly and willingly to hunger. Mm. He responds to hunger. The Bible says that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. How hungry are you? I mean, I've seen God come in a place because everybody was hungry until they swiped everybody. Everybody was on the floor. They didn't know how they got there. Uh. The power of God, because everybody yielded. Everybody was hungry for a manifestation of God. That's the reason why we changed our church. We are not just a sermon and a sanctuary anymore, Amen. but we are the house of God. Amen. This is the house of God. So when you come into the house of God, it's not like coming into no other house. Before we came in this house, we came in the house and we just were a sermon and we just were a sanctuary. And we came in the house and we left the same way we came. But when you won't change, when you know that you can change, there is change, there is hope, then you leave the sanctuary a different way than you came. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So it, it, it's so eagerly and willing to, to the hunger. The heart cries out. The praise of people who approach in humility and repentance. And in love, the person arrives only in the midst of praise. The, person, the presence arrives only in the midst of praise. So that's the reason why you have to understand. You don't have to worry about anything when you come in the house of the Lord. You ought to know that God is going to do what he's going to do. When you come into the house and you give him exuberant praise. Yeah. And I'm talking about exuberant praise because I was thinking of that day because I came in the house. And you know, I'm always repenting about anything. I don't care. If I, if I have an inkling that it feels funny, I'm going to repent. <laughs> that's just me. And, 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 and that's the reason why I will, because when I come into the house of the Lord, I want to come for God. I'm expecting something from God. There's an expectation that's up on me when I come into the house of the Lord. Because I could have been on my back in my bed, Amen. like I was two days ago. But, Lord, but the Lord so fit that I came today with no pain at all in my body. Amen. So I give him all the glory for that and all that he will do and what he will do. Not because I was sucking it up and, oh, oh my, uh, no, no, no. Every time the pain, because I had spasms, everybody ever, ever had spasms in your back, or especially in your back. Now, they okay in my leg and my arm, but when they're in that back, there's something about that back spasm that will kick you like a mule. Come on now. Yeah. And every time it spasm, I was like, oh, God, help me, Jesus. And I started pleading the blood. But you know, every time I said Jesus, huh. it untied just a little bit. Jesus, Jesus, a little bit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Every time they wanted to spasm, I'll say Jesus. And immediately when I say Jesus, it'll loose itself. By the time I got to patient first, and by the time I got to, got to see the doctor, I was hurting to sit in the seat. By the time I left there, I told my husband, I said, oh, I feel better already. Amen. And I thank God for the prayers of the saints. Amen. I thank God for your prayers because without your prayers, I know it wouldn't move that quick, even though I had prayed. But it's something about, I can pray for anybody and believe God for you. But sometimes when I pray for myself, I can't believe for myself. I need somebody else to pray for me. Amen. I need for somebody else to say something on my behalf. I need for somebody else to give God a resume if I got the Pamela on it. Amen. 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 But the presence arrives only in the midst of praise. So the more I praise him, the more I said, thank you, Jesus. The more I said, Lord, come into the midst. The more I said, okay, God, no, no, no. And then I rebuked the pain. I said, no, that's got to go. But I still was praising him in the midst of him. I was saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But every time I said, thank you, Jesus, every time I said, Jesus, the pain lifted. Amen. And I thank God that I'm here today with no pain. Amen. Back in my Amen. body. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the Hebrews 13 and 5. Now, if you really desire to live a kebab life style, we must learn to cultivate a continual environment of praise. What if everybody 
and anybody who all came in. If you came to practice and you came praising him. Mm-hmm. If you came to praise and worship practice, you came in praising. You came in bigger and biting because he don't come in your midst with that. But if you come in with an attitude of praise, if you come in with the children in an attitude of praise in, pra- in, in children's church, rooted, if they come in with an attitude of praise, Amen. if everybody who walked through those doors would come in the sanctuary with an attitude of praise, do you not know that that would be the cabal that would live in this house? Every time you come in, you will feel the presence of praise. That's where we were in 824. Some of y'all don't know that. Amen. 824 was the cabal. Amen. Yeah. Every time you came into 824, that was a praise. God, people praise God. But we, but, but that's what I'm saying. But back then, the cabal was easy to do. Because we were yielded. We wanted his presence. Amen. And that's what you have. You've got to want God's presence. You, he's not, he's not going to come down in the midst of you. You don't want him. Amen. He's not going to let you reject him. Come down, come over you, and then you shut down. Amen. No, it's not going to happen. Amen. So this is a cabal that God wants to be in the house of the Lord. It says, let your conversation be without com- covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he had said... I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know why he said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee? I know, I know a lot of y'all quote this scripture and you said, well, God told me he'll never leave me or forsake me. Right. No, the reason why he'll never leave you or forsake you because your conversations are pure. Uh, yes. Amen, amen. Yes. Mm. Uh. Right. Come on now. Amen. Mm. Yes, Lord. And even your content with such things as, as ye have, for he has said, I would never leave you. So even as your conversation is pure, even as you have an expectation of him coming to the house of the Lord, even as you have praise on your lips and thanksgiving in your heart, all these things come together. And you know what? He'll walk with you everywhere you are. Amen. That's why he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He said, because in the praise and in the worship, I'm always there. Yes. Because what we're doing, we are, are what? Building up, yes. pushing up, yes. timber. Push it up. Sweet aroma. The sweet aroma of praise. We're we're the sacrifice of the praise. We're pushing it up into the atmosphere. We're pushing it up so that God can get the glory out of our lives. So when he smells the sweet savor that's coming from your lips, the praise, then he comes down into your rescue quickly. He comes down into your house quickly. He comes down into healing your body quickly. He comes down to saturating and cleansing your mind quickly. When you praise him, delivers us in the praise. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So if you desire to live a kebab lifestyle, you got to cultivate this continual praise. Before anyone, anything else, we need the presence of God. Before anything else, we need the presence of God. Let me help some of y'all that don't understand this. Yes, you do. I don't care what you are doing, you need the presence of God in what you're doing. Yes, no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. And no matter what it is, you need the presence of God in it. you got to have the presence of God. I, I, I'm telling you, I don't care what it is. You gotta have the presence of God in that thing. Amen. If you're sick of God and, a, and you had a crossroad in your life, then you need to put God in the presence of that. Amen. Because yes. only God can touch yes. whatever needs to be touched. Yes. Only God can free whatever needs to be free. Yes. Only God can speak to that yes. individual what he wants to speak to them, that they will yield to him yes. and do what he says. Yes. No human can help you. Amen. Only the presence of God yes. can help you. Try it sometime. Only the presence of God because we rely upon people too much. Yes. We want to tell people this and tell people that. When we ought to go to God or when we go to God in praise and thanksgiving and supplication, yes. then all that anxiousness will leave. Amen. It says be anxious for nothing. Amen. Be anxious for nothing. Amen. But what? But by prayer and supplication. Make your request made known unto God. And, and the God then of, what? The God of peace. Then the God of peace. Hey. Yes. Will guard your with heart. garrison. Your heart. Your heart. Military term, garrison. Your heart. He will garrison your heart and your, and your mind. So when he does three things, peace, he gives us a peace, he protects our mind and our heart. So that's what praise is powerful, y'all. All we got to do is praise him. All we got to do is bring, bring, bring the praise in his, down in the midst of everything that's going on. Everything in life depends on God's presence. Everything. Everything. Amen. 
Everything in life depends on God's presence. Amen. Wherever we go, that depends on God's presence. In your house, it depends on God's presence. Yes. Or uh, riding down the road. That depends on God's presence. Because somebody can hit you. But then because you've got the presence of God enveloping you, that person doesn't even touch you. A lot of things don't happen to us when we have the presence of God surrounding us. A lot of things keep our minds because we have the presence of God surrounding us. A lot of times the enemy will like to come in like a flood. But the enemy, but the Lord will set a standard in his word. And he will tell you, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto me. Are known unto me. Not to your sister, not to your brother, not to your mama, your daddy, but be known unto God. He says, I'll guard your heart and your mind. I'll bring peace. In other words, I'll bring peace in that unpeaceful place. I'll bring healing in that body. Oh God. I'll bring financial security in that place. But I have to give thanks in all things. So we come near. To God through praise, because praise is, it, it, it establishes an environment in which God is pleased to dwell. That's, that's the main purpose of our praise. We want him to dwell. We want him to be in the midst. We want him to be happy when he's down up in here. <laughs> yeah, we want him to be happy. And when he is happy, then everything turns around. Uh, have you ever, I don't know about, have you ever been praising the Lord? You come, you heavy, and then all of a sudden you start praising the Lord. You start praising the Lord, not feeling anything, which, 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 which we ain't looking for a feeling. Uh -huh. We should never look for a yeah. feeling. But then all of a sudden something starts yeah. to move. Yeah. It comes down from the head, in your head and down, because your mind now says, you know what? I need to praise the Lord for this because he has been good to me. Yeah. Then, then you start thinking, say, you know what? Look at what God has done for me. Because you begin to run everything down that God has done for you. And something changes in your mind. And then your mind starts to speak to your heart. And your heart begins to get a revelation that I need to praise the Lord. Hey. And I don't need to be sitting on my seat. All that he's done for me. The ordinary just won't do no more. So y'all got to understand that. But it goes down in my heart. And when it goes down in my heart, it starts putting down in my belly. And then it starts getting down in my belly. Then the water, the living water, they begin to flow out of me. And by the time it gets there, it's in my feet. I got running. I got picked up and put them down in my feet. And see, y'all don't have to understand. Don't be ashamed to praise the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Well, we got to get out the shame faces. Amen. So, see, God, we have to be created to praise God. Yeah. You have been created to worship God. Amen. You have not been created to look at somebody else worship, worship and praise Him. But every last one of you have been created to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 If you don't know what to praise Him for, just think about He died on the cross for you. Amen. Even though you might not know Him, He still died for you. Amen. I didn't know Him when, I, when He died for me, but when I realized what He did for me, I was so gracious yes. and grateful. So if praise is necessary to attract God's presence, then it is also necessary to maintain that presence. Amen. 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 What, see, this is what has been happening with us. Soon as the praise and worship sit down, everybody sit down. We don't keep that praise going. That inward praise. Because there's an inward praise that can continue on the inside of you. Amen. Not just when because we have got in the ritual, in the ritual, uh, we have got reformed into thinking that once the praise and worship is over, then God is over. The presence of the Lord is over. No, we want him to be continually in the presence. Because even me without the presence, I can't preach or I can't speak. Even me without the presence, we can't do nothing. Without the presence, I don't care what you do in here, you can't do nothing without the presence. Amen. Because if you don't have the presence, you have you. You got self. Yes. Yep. And self is doing everything. Yep. But it's not the presence. Give me Isaiah 64 and 1. Isaiah 6 and 1. I'm almost finished. Where to praise. Where to praise God even when we don't want to. Mm. Amen. 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 Even when I don't want to praise him. Come on, man. Yeah. Even when I have 101 reasons Come on. why I shouldn't praise him. Even when I don't like him today. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know how we are. I like him some days and I don't like him. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we get around and push around him, but some days we don't like God because we feel God has done something to us. God has, has, has destroyed some. God has taken something from you. God don't take. God's a multiply. God gives. Amen. 
the devil takes. Yeah. And I was talking to someone the other day, and I was saying a lot of people don't even believe that the enemy can take from them. They accuse God. All they accuse God of everything that goes wrong. But never, never talk out of their mouths what God has done right. Never, ever tell anybody what God. Some of us need a flashback. Some of us need to go retrospect and see what God has done for us. And we always be a pity party. Talk about, oh God, you just don't know. And we got all this stuff we got. And God done provided for us. God done gave us jobs. God done gave us raises and promotions. But then we still have the audacity on some days to just say, I don't have time for you, Lord. I don't have time for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We be there. Amen. Mm-hmm. See, we have to retract, we have to move from that. We have to understand that God is God all by himself. So it came into the year of King Ozai in Isaiah 6 and 1. It says, King Ozai died in a vision. In a vision. And he says, I saw the Lord. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. I saw King Ozai die. Then I saw the Lord sit up on the throne, high and lifted up, and the skirts of his train filled the most holy part of the temple. Yeah. And so I was looking at that. I was looking at that and I said, okay, our Uzzites, our Uzzites got to die. Our Uzzites got to die. Now, this is my revelation to this. When King Uzzite died, look what happened. When Uzziah died, Isaiah said he saw the Lord. So that means to me that the Lord wasn't in the presence until Uzziah died. And so there's a, whatever the things there are in your life that keep you from seeking God, that keep you from praising God, that keep you from loving God or, or depending upon God, they got to die. Yeah. It's time for them to go. You need to tell them you know you've been here too long. You're keeping me from praising the Lord. You're keeping me from moving. You're keeping me from lifting my hands in the sanctuary. You keep me, you're keeping me from worshiping, bowing down to my God. You're yeah. keeping me from the things of God that I really need from Him. Us I, you die. And then once, uh, once us I dies in our lives, then we'll be sitting up seeing the Lord on the throne. Come on, amen. amen. Woo. <laughs> then we'll be high and lifted up and, and, and His train will fill this very sanctuary. And I ain't talking about high, I'm talking about in the, in, the, in the heavenly places. The heavenly places can come down in the earth realm. And the temple can be filled with his presence. This house can be filled with the presence of the Lord. When the Uzzah die, when the pray, when the praise and worship is going forth, there is a resistance that comes up on you. I know it do. It tries me. It tries me. There's a resistance that comes up on you. If you do not break the resistance, you will not break through to what God has for you. Because there's something in your life that needs to be dealt with. And God, the only way God can deal with it, he got to break down the Uzzites. he got to break down all those things in your mind and in your heart and in the things, even the, the things that you are hurting about, the things that are frustrated to you, the things that are not working, the anxiousness and, and, and all this stuff that comes with that. The only way you know how to do that is when you release yourself from all of that, then the Lord will come up on his throne. Mm. He will open yourself. He will open you up in a vision. He will begin to let you see the Bible in full play of the Lord sitting up on the throne, wow. high, lifted up, and his train is filling the temple. So above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. Mm. With twine he covered his face, and with twine he covered his feet. And with twine he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mm. The whole earth is full. And the doorpost. And the whole earth is full of his glory. And the doorpost of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Mm. This is what I'm talking about when the cabal comes into the midst of us. When we have yielded to God. When we have yield to God. When we have got all this other stuff out of our minds. See, because one thing about it, 
I understand that you you defeat the devil defeats you when you come to the house of the Lord and you don't let God deal with your whatever whatever you came in here with. Yeah. And you go back out that door with that same thing. Yeah. I believe that that's a slap in God's face yeah. because now you're saying I don't need you. Yeah. I, I can do this by myself. I can yeah. handle yeah. this God. And see, we are too too much in the way. That's the reason why that's the us out in the way, or us out of independence, or us out of you know telling yeah. God what well, I can handle it. Or, no, no, you can't handle nothing. Amen. 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 You can't handle it without God. Amen. You got you got to have God. And and in and, and, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And that's what we want the presence of the Lord to be. So that the house will be filled with smoke. Smoke. The wonder king, the wonder thing, the wonderful thing about praise is that when we start doing it, even though we're not in the mood, before long, the very act of praise will put us in the mood. The very act. Yes, it does. Amen. It does. I remember when I was coming up in the old church, and old mother would come over there and she said, Come on, come on, daughter. Mm -hmm. And she would be praising him. And she said, Just just pick them up, put them down. Just pick them up. Just that's all you do. Just pick them up, put them down. Just pick them up, put them down. See, because in, in those days when you as young people, y'all got resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yes, you got resistance. Yes. And, I'm a, and, and that's what I'm saying. Don't, don't be up on this front row. Uh -huh. Amen. Making resistance. All right. All right. Amen. And you know what I'm talking about. Don't do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so young people, y'all don't understand that the resistance yes. that come against you. Yes. yes. And, this, and the resistance that the enemy bring against you. Yes. yes. See, because even you can come out of a place, pure pressure. Yes. You got pure pressure, you can come out of that with a praise. Yes. Yes. You can tell God, thank you. You ain't got to say it out loud. God can hear you in, in, in your mind. Just say, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But with that in place, you understand what it's all about. So we have to make sure that, that, that we are in the mood, that we are in the mood, that we can get in the mood when we feel like we can. So God does not visit his people with his presence without our first lifting up his praise. He ain't coming in until you lift the praise up. Amen. You know why he's not coming in until you lift the praise up? Because of us eyes. You come in here with your us eyes. Yes, we are looking at that strength. Y'all looking like it's real strength. <laughs> you come in with your other eyes. You come up. Uh, uh, you come up in Sunday school with your other eyes. You come in. You come up. You come up in a hundred and one reasons why you ain't gonna praise him. Wow. I'm just here. I'm just gonna be like this. I'm just gonna sit up here. I'm just gonna be. You know, this is way. This just the way it is. Hmm. Yeah. On your cell phone. Mm. Mm. Uh, Checking uh, Facebook. Right. Uh, Praise and worship going on on your cell phone. Wow. Uh -huh. Checking your messages. Right. Other sides. Other sides. Amen. Other sides. Woo, my God. That reason, and that was that for that reason, the cell phone is an Ozai for that reason. Because even when we bring it, we let you bring it to the house of the Lord. But you know what? You still are not determined to, to beat that, that Ozai in the in the cell phone. Mm -hmm. Wow. You already you already looking at it two hundred and fifty times during the week. Mm -hmm. Two hundred and fifty times times seven. Well, it ain't supposed to be supposed to be rested on a Sabbath day. Yeah. Uh, now, I, that's really. But you're doing two hundred fifty fifty watches on your cell phone. Yeah. Fifth two hundred and fifty times seven. Mm. We are on our cell phone more than we read the Bible. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just think if you put your head in the Bible every time your cell phone bleep, bleep, bleep. Just what if you read the scripture and memorized it? Amen. Amen. No, boy, you know that. Oh, yeah, you know that Bible like the back of your hand, buddy. <laughs> but that's what, that's what I'm saying. That a lot of things that are, that these are us eyes right. that come into the lives of God's people. So when it's time to praise the Lord, you can't praise Him. Yeah. You, ain't got, you, you ain't got anything to praise Him with. So, shout means to Ruha, make a joyful noise, a battle cry, the sound, and the alarm. Now, this is, this is the last I'm going to give you because I want to show you what praise and worship does. True worship forces, focuses on God, not yourself. True praise focuses on God, not yourself. In our worship, if the worship lacks the word, God will not honor it or release the power to it. Yeah. If God does not manifest his glory, it is usually because he is not... He is not satisfied with the worship. 
Worship is the straw is developed, excuse me, worship is developed only in our time of intimacy when we are alone with God. That's the only way that we can bring that type of worship into the house. You gotta be in your at your house doing it. Amen. You gotta be wherever you gotta be doing it. You need to be doing it somewhere. Amen. You just can't come up here and say and say, I'm gonna do praise and worship, but you ain't got no worship experience at home. Amen. Or you, have, you don't have a worship experience in, at, 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 at wherever you are. Amen. If you're not worshiping God and then you want to come in here and worship, then that ain't gonna mix. Amen. It don't work like that. Amen. Praise focuses on proclaiming the works of God, but worship focuses on the person of God. Praise is in, uh, initiated by us. Yes, praise is initiated by us. But worship is God's to our praise. Wor worship is God to our praise. Wow. To praise is to seek God. To worship is to be found by Him. Wow. To, praise, to praise is to seek God. Wow. To worship is to be found by Him. Oh. Praise increases the anointing, but worship brings the glory. Praise is like building a house for God. Worship is moving into that house. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yes, that, that, see, 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 see what we're saying, where we're going. In praise, we talk about God. In worship, we speak of God and He answers. Yes. <laughs> that, that is the reason why, see, we, and I told you what praise was a declaration, proclaiming. Yeah. But when we worship, when we worship, he moves on us. When we worship, he answers. If there's anything that you die, anything that you need him to answer, it's in the worship. Amen. It's going to only be in the worship. Yes. Mm. Jesus. In praise, we are aware of his love. In worship, we are aware of his holiness. Amen. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Worship will be as deep and profound as praise is high, exuberant and powerful. That's the only way worship can come in because what you're doing in the praise, you're breaking down us eyes. Yes. So you can't worship God with us eyes. Amen. But with a, with a, with a exuberant, yes. I'm talking about an exuberant, powerful, high praise, yes. you break down the us eyes. Yes. It's, it's, it's like a washing of water. It clears the mind of an individual yes. where they'll be able to receive God in the worship. Yes. They'll be able to receive Him. They'll be able to do what He needs, needs to, to do. Our level of ascension into the presence of God is determined by, our sound, by the sound of worship we release. Each time a new sound overflows in a church, the, atmosphere, the atmospheres change. Yes. True worship focuses on God, not on self. Right. In our worship lacks the word. God would not honor it or release his power through it. If God does not manifest his glory, it's usually because, I had read that two times, it's usually because they have not, that is not even in the presence. So praise and worship is important to God. Yes, it is. I wanted to let you know that and thank God for Dr. Jeff because this is the arsenals of the Remnant Church. And this is and this is this is two of them, praise and worship. Yes, mm -hmm. Praise and worship can do a, eradicate a lot of stuff. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. yes, it is. Just think if we praise and worship God in everything that we did. You know what? Oh no, I gotta give God praise first. Amen. No. Yeah. I don't care if we're coming out and do the yards. Oh no, I gotta give God praise first. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't care if I'm going out to run. Uh oh, I gotta give God praise first. Amen. Glory to God. So this is what we ought to understand that with praise and worship is important. Know that when you're having a situation in your life, all you gotta do is praise and worship God. And the outcome, I promise you, the outcome will be right and on time. You ain't got to, you ain't got to, you ain't gonna have to beg and once you get the, the revelation of praise and worship, you ain't gonna beg it no more. Amen. Amen. And you won't even be crying. Amen. <laughs> but you'll be always praising him with a pure praise and worshiping him, knowing that God's gonna give me the answer. Amen. Who wouldn't stay with that and you know that God's gonna give you the answer through the worship? Amen. Who knows? And I and I do believe that the, the answer will come quicker than, than it will in prayer. Amen. 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 Yeah. And because of that, because of his Psalm 22 and 3, yeah. he inhabits the praises of his people. Yes, do you know all you got to do is praise him and he's here? Mm -hmm. He's here. Mm -hmm. You got to go on a 40 day fast, read from Genesis to Revelations. All you got to do is praise him praise. and worship him. Wow. That's all you got to do. 
And, and, and that's the reason, and, and that's why I always wanted, you know, I, I know people are gifted and talented in writing songs and doing things like with music and stuff. It's like she wrote that song last night, it just came up out of her. So where did it come from? She said it came up out of her. It came out of her spirit. So every song that is written in this ministry that we sing, it comes out of, out of an individual spirit. The spirit of God that connects with God. And they're able to put words together and bring songs to a place where they are totally different from anything you've heard. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. But, but, but most people who are really true worshipers, really true worshipers, can really get into the presence of the Lord quick. Very quick. And you will feel him the moment you raise your hands. Mm -hmm. You will know he's there the moment you raise your hands. Amen. Especially when you have been a worshiper. Amen. All the time. All the time. Amen. God will come in and rescue. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet and give God praise.